Kia ora Koto. thank you for joining us in our session today. Um, we will be talking about how we develop the Wahine Toa Women in Defence Project. Ko Louisa Horman um, Aho, I work in the research team at the Air Force Museum of New Zealand in Christchurch and I'm here today with my colleague Maraika, um, who's also from the Air Force Museum and Liz Milden from the National Army Museum Te Mata Toa. Together, along with Karis Bowes um, from the Torpe Torpedo Bay Navy Museum, who unfortunately can't be with us today, um, we are the team behind Wahine Tour, an online exhibition that we created uh, to mark the 125th anniversary of suffrage in Aotearoa, New Zealand. So I'll briefly give a bit of background before I hand over to Liz and Maraika, um, who will explain why we decided to collaborate online for this particular project and how we achieved this. Our three organisations are the National Service Museums for the New Zealand Defence Force, and we're based in three locations around the country. Navy Museum at Devonport in Auckland, Army Museum at Waiuru, Central North Island, and the Air Force Museum at Wigram in Christchurch. Given the separate services we um, represent, not to mention our physical distance from each other, our museums don't often work together. But for the 2018 Suffrage 125 um, Whakatū Wahine National Event Programme, which we're proud to be part of, we ended up pooling our skills and resources to work very closely producing this exhibition, and in the process overcoming a number of obstacles that have prevented us from working together collaboratively in the past. So when my original exhibition proposal on Air Force Women in Combat was accepted as an online exhibition, our director at the time, the late uh, Therese Angelo, suggested broadening the scope to also include Navy and Army personnel. So then deciding to collaborate, it became a tri-service museum project um, with Karis and Liz joining me on the research team, um, interviewing personnel and Maraika undertaking the huge task of video editing and designing the exhibition online. So collaborating in this way allowed us to interview personnel from around the country. Um, and here, sorry, my mic's gone. Um, here are a few excerpts from the exhibition. It's actually, <laughs> it's not just about females anymore. But maybe it's just about work-life balance across the board. So I wanted to do something that was challenging for me um, and something where I could express myself as a Māori woman. I didn't feel any different from a male trainee. I felt exactly the same. I was treated the same and I was still expected to do the same things that a male could. Um, the only thing that was different was that the physical test standards are different for females. Um, but otherwise I say everything else was smack bang. Kia ora, I'm Liz Milden. I'm the curator of heraldry at the National Army Museum Te Mātātoa. And I was lucky enough to be asked to work alongside Louisa, Marika and Karis on this project. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about why collaborate, but first of all, I'd like to give a bit of background on um, the women and the women in the services in New Zealand. So, on the 29th of July 1977, the New Zealand Women's Royal Naval Service, the New Zealand Women's Royal Army Corps, and the Women's Royal New Zealand Air Force, which were separate from the main regular regular force, they were disbanded and the women serving in them were integrated into other corps and units within the three regular services. With regard to the army, even though women were now part of the regular force and working fully alongside their male counterparts, there were still restrictions in place regarding which corps women could serve in and how far their careers could progress. Section 16, Clause 2 of the Human Rights Commission Act 1977 meant that the NZDF, New Zealand Defence Force, could exercise a preference with regard to who they recru recruited into specific corps or trades and also who was promoted within those corps or trades. 
Women were not able to serve in combat roles across the three services. Within the Army, they were excluded from corps such as the Royal New Zealand Infantry. Restrictions were placed on career progression within, the Royal New Ze within corps such as the Royal New Zealand Artillery. So they could still join the artillery, but they, their prospects of promotion were, um, were very limited. In 1987, so this is 10 years after the initial integration, it was only then that women in the Royal New Zealand Air Force were able to train as pilots. And in 1988, they were able to fly combat aircraft, but again, not in combat situations. And the same for the Navy, they were able to serve at sea, but again, in non-combat roles. The 2006 Human Rights Women in Armed Forces Amendment Bill removed all restrictions in relation to which corps or units women could serve in and meant that women could now serve in combat roles, whether that be with the Navy, Army or the Air Force. So um, why collaborate? The three service museums, as um, Louisa said before, had never collaborated before on an exhibition. So one, Suffrage 125 presented the perfect opportunity to combine skills and resources. You know, why would we not take the opportunity to work with our fellow service museum colleagues? The success of this collaboration could also provide leverage for pursuing further tri-service museum projects in the future. The legislation, the legislation that was introduced regarding gender integration and the 2006 Amendment Bill was not just about one service. It was about moving forward and then finally abolishing gender discrimination across all three services. The project was an opportunity to try something new with regard to it being a collaboration. It was also a collaboration that was made more feasible due to being able to successfully utilise available technologies, Skype, Basecamp, to, so we could connect the team members who were based in three different parts of the country. By involving all three museums, access to resources and research materials was increased, which meant, to, which meant went towards providing a more thorough and balanced coverage of each of the three services. Team members could also utilise the skills and support of colleagues within their own museums. Each service and each service museum can have a sense of ownership in relation to the exhibition and the material that is being shared with the public. Awesome. Uh, kia ora, everyone. Uh, my name is Maraika. I'm the uh, communication assistant at the Air Force Museum of New Zealand. So I'm not a not a trained exhibition <laughs> designer by by no means. But uh, when uh, when the team asked me to to join in with them, um, sort of started off as a in an editing capacity, and then it developed into oh, hang on, I'm, I'm quite curious to see you know w what else I can do with with this online thing because I I am quite um, curious and to see what we could do. So it's sort of developed from there. So um, just with that in mind. <laughs> so I'll just uh, be talking to you guys a bit more about the, the benefits of going digital with this exhibition. So the, uh, the women's interviews were video and audio. So it made sense that it would become an online exhibition. It also meant that it was going to be more accessible. So this meant that people who'd never physically stepped foot into a museum would be able to view these stories, and especially these stories which we, uh, within our um, different service museums, may or may not have explored in such a way in terms of these oral um, histories. So it's also adaptable. It can be used on a variety of different digital devices. Uh, so as you can see here, we've got some examples of, of the launch. So uh, we have here the, uh, the launch at uh, the Navy Museum. They also had a, a blackboard, which they invited visitors that came into the museum to write their, their stories, um, share who their wahini toa is in their lives. And then uh, we've got Liz there at the launch at the Army Museum. And, and you can see they have a, a touch screen at their entrance of the Army Museum as well, which can then explain to visitors a bit more about the online exhibition 
and also invite them to further explore this online. It's also very flexible. Being a, uh, on a digital platform meant that we could uh, update as we went along. <laughs> so that meant uh, we didn't have to worry about reprinting any panels, <laughs> uh, which is great, um, especially with a, a deadline that was not going to move uh, for us. So it was really, uh, really quite handy. It also meant that for the future, we could add more interviews. Uh, we could add more supplementary materials from our um, different collections to explain the wider context of the exhibition. We could also update the, the timeline that appears on the, the online exhibition as well as uh, policies change or anything else that we need to add. We can also add more features. So if we decided that we wanted to provide a space for people to share their stories uh, by commenting, that's something that we could also look at doing because it's, it's flexible and, and adaptable in that manner. The flexibility and adaptability also means that we can take these interviews and we can use them in different types of exhibitions. So for example, if the Navy Museum wanted to do a exhibition around leadership today within the Navy, they could easily utilize the different interviews that we do have um, from the different um, interviews from the leadership there. It's also cost effective, um, as I said, in the terms of not having to actually print or produce any print materials. So uh, that just meant that, again, um, yeah, sorry, that's <laughs> basically it as well as I already said that before. Um, Measurability. Um, I know in previous talks, everyone's been talking about measurability, Google Analytics. You can see how many people, you know, have viewed the page. And um, the page has been viewed uh, 2,489 times from the time of launch, which was t 28th of November 2018, um, until the, this uh, metric is up until, measured up until the 30th of September 2019. Uh, each video is around seven minutes long. And we can see that people who have visited the online exhibition spend around an average of 10 minutes on this page. So while we don't necessarily know how they interact with that just, just yet, it's something we have to look in, into in terms of measuring that, we can make a sort of educated guess that they're at least watching either one in full or watching a few minutes of one and then deciding, oh, actually not really into this one, but let's move on to that one. All right, I'll just uh, sort of carry on where sort of Liz started in terms of uh, working collaboratively. So as she mentioned, we used a cloud-based um, project management tool called Basecamp. So we use this to manage the project as well as to communicate. Um, it was also used to share uh, files, um, ask questions in a forum-based environment, um, which meant all team members could view this. So for example, if um, uh, Liz, Louisa and Karis were talking about um, interviewees that they needed to talk to, but I wasn't necessarily in that live chat, I could always go back later on and view that and kind of catch up in that sense, um, especially because we're also um, physically <laughs> removed from each other. It also helped us to set clear deadlines that we could all view as well by using the calendar function. So in the beginning, Louisa would set up all of the tasks that we needed to do and the dates that we needed to accomplish them by, which was also really useful for us to ensure that we are keeping on track and if we're noticing that we're a little bit behind on something, trying to understand why that is and seeing what other resources we needed to pull from um, our different organizations. We held weekly Skype meetings um, just to catch up on any issues that we may have occurred during the week. Um, and again, just quickly realizing if there's something that we needed a little bit more help with on one area and who could pick up 
um, certain things. So, for example, a lot of the um, interviews that were um, conducted um, for, with the um, Air Force personnel who are based up in Fenuapai were conducted by Karis, who is based up in Auckland, um, which was really great. So it meant that Louisa didn't have to <laughs> fly up especially to, to conduct those, those interviews. We also used a, a cloud-based computer file transfer system called WeTransfer, and this was mainly used for the large raw video files um, that were sent to me to then um, edit. So by using things like Basecamp and Skype, we were able to maintain really good general com uh, communication. Um, there was obviously also the old school telephone <laughs> as well, if things got a bit tricky towards the end especially. Um, but, but overall, we, we felt that that communication worked really well. And there's just a lovely little <laughs> picture of um, the three of them having a bit of a Skype conversation. Um, yeah. All right, so I'll just uh, talk to you a bit about the, the editing process, um, which I was really excited to do, <laughs> to get my hands on. <laughs> um, but though, um, yeah, I had to give her what I wished for. Uh, I got all the all the, the footage, and then we were like, right, <laughs> what do we do now? Because uh, the beauty of, of this project was that we had no idea what we were going to receive. We had uh, questions that we asked that was focused around the, the journey of all these females, uh, why they decided to join, um, how did they find that whole process of, of joining in the beginning, and you know where do they draw their strength from in terms of their wahini tower? And of course, you don't know who's going to say what, how long are they going to speak for. Um, personalities are very different. It also depends on where in their career they, they are. Um, people tend to be maybe a little bit, I um, wouldn't say short in their answers, but they, they knew what they wanted to say when they were young and energetic, and they're like, yes, let's go. Uh, Georgie Chris was a great example. We saw that in the, in the clip, um, very energetic. Uh, just thinks if you, you're able to do it, go for it. Uh, we're, all, we're all the same, let's go for it. Um, and then you get uh, you know, really thoughtful interviews as well uh, from uh, Lisa Hun as well, talking more about leadership. And, and senior leadership. And so you, you're getting a lot of different types of, of answers. And so with that in mind, we, we thought, oh, we don't really want to cut this up too much and say, you know, here's a slide, here's the question, here's the answer. Uh, so we sort of decided, no, let's just, we'll, we'll, we'll still cut it up just to make it a bit, a bit shorter for the, for the scope of the exhibition. But we still wanted it to feel like a natural conversation. And they were just telling us their story. So at the time, the Air Force Museum did not have um, the Adobe Premiere Pro editing <laughs> software that I really wanted to use. Um, however, uh, the Tauranga Christchurch Centri uh, City Central Library came to the rescue with their um, availability of all the Adobe uh, suite software. So I was able to actually go in there, um, spend as much time as I needed to. Um, I didn't have to book in or explain really. I just yeah, went there and kind of taught myself quickly how to, to edit uh, with some YouTube tutorials. Uh, but there are staff available to actually give you tutorials to, to help you with the basics of how, how to use the software, which I thought was really incredible because it just showed you that if you don't necessarily have all those resources and you wanted to do something collaboratively like this, there are resources out there for you to be able to do this. Um, it was quickly also noticed that I needed a very clear brief on what we wanted. I needed to know exactly when I needed to cut and stop and start. So again, it was just that very clear communication to say, hey guys, this is, uh, we've got a lot of amazing things here, but for this project, we need to decide what exactly it is that we want. So they were really great and actually provided me with uh, clear outlines of what it is that they wanted. Um, stop at this minute, start at this minute, when she says this, do this. And uh, that was really, really great. It really helped, helped out a lot with, with editing. Okay, so I'll just uh, go over to the, the, the current home of the exhibition. 
So we decided to host uh, Wahini Toa Women in Defence on the Air, Form, Air Force Museum of New Zealand's website. So the website is hosted on WordPress, which made it really easy to create an online exhibition as it is a drag and drop uh, sort of function, which means I didn't have to <laughs> learn how to code. <laughs> it was bad enough I had to kind of, <laughs> well, I don't know if I should say to learn how to edit quickly. Um, but as I was already doing this for, for my job as a communications assistant, I mentally, you know, stuck up my hand when Louisa asked me about the, uh, the capabilities of doing this on a website, and I said, yes, yes, I can do that, let's do it. Um, we uploaded the final cut of the interviewees uh, to the Navy Museum's Vimeo channel. Um, so that again just shows you that collaborative nature of the exhibition by using other resources. So again, the Vimeo channel is something that the Navy Museum already uses, and it meant that I wasn't going to use up all of our space in our media library on our WordPress website. All right, so um, now I'll just delve into the um, world of the design of the digital exhibition. So I kind of took the approach that the videos would act as interactive exhibition panels, like the ones that you would find in a physical exhibition at a museum. The final 13 videos encapsul encapsulates the overall viewpoint of the interview's time in the New Zealand Defence Force, and they all differ in lengths and are on average just under seven minutes. So the colour purple was used to link with suffrage one to five, and it also helps distinguish the online exhibition from the uh, rest of the Air Force Museum's website. So I'll just uh, do a bit of a walk through. So the three uh, images and first paragraph act as the introduction or overview panel you'd find at the start of an exhibition. So I am Lynette Baikani, I am from oh. Taupo and went to no Taupo sound. Military College. Um, I joined the Navy in 19... So as you can see, you can just walk through that. We use the uh, quote box um, to highlight key themes from each interviewee. And we also use the, the colour purple, so the purple banners you'll see, as a way to indicate to the visitor that you're about to enter into a new section, sort of similar, similar that you would find if you were walking through a physical exhibition moving into a new idea or a theme. So historical context was provided by archival recruitment material, as you've um, seen previously in the slides, uh, and they were uh, curated from the, the Navy, Army, and the Air Force Museum. It is displayed in the form of an interactive slideshow, and um, you can also view that onto the website. A clear and simple uh, timeline design uh, was also implemented, so the visitor can have a broader understanding of women in the free services since gender integration in 1977 and gender equity changes. And I'll just pass back to Louisa. All right, so we've got about five minutes, so I'll try and wrap up. Um, so although the exhibition has been launched, the potential for adding new content and linking related content to it, like blog posts that our individual museums are working on anyway, um, is virtually limitless um, due to the exhibition's digital nature. Um, however, like each of our museums have our own other big projects that we've got going on. Um, and so we need to respond to those um, activities as they arise and so we need to ensure that going forward all three museums have shared web administrator rights to upload, edit and manage the exhibition independently from each other. Um, this is most easily achieved by relocating the exhibition to its own web domain. First and foremost this will enable any one of our museums to upload additional content to the exhibition um, even if the other two museums are engaged in other work. 
Um, it also allows us to plan for the exhibition's future, archive it, expand the content and interactivity wherever possible and run a refreshed communications plan around its relaunch. Um, a web domain will require minimal but ongoing funding and so we'll be working on a proposal for this in the new year. Some other updates will include some written form content from RNZAF recruits, interview captions for um, our deaf members of the online community audience and souvenir leaflets to better promote the online exhibition to our real world museum visitors. So, um, yeah, basically this ex whole project was an experiment for us um, and the exhibition development process was also exper experimental in nature. Working across three museums that all intersect with NZDF um, and its individual units or services as w um, was a challenge, especially working within a, a defence IT environment. So that's why... Basecamp and Skype were so, so valuable to us because we can't file share very easily, we can't Skype, um, there's a lot of things that we, yeah, have to, we had to think around, um, around some of those challenges while we, while we did this, even though we all work for the same organisation essentially. Um, but despite budget, we didn't have a budget as well, so we just kind of like asked for things when we did need them. Um, we didn't have an allocated budget. Um, but despite these constraints and challenges of distance, we achieved pretty good communication. And um, we also have identified areas for improvement and produced a process template which can be used as a guide for future projects of this kind within our organisations. Um, and yeah, so we launched this about exactly one month ago on the 28th of November um, 2018, 125 years since New Zealand women cast their first vote in the New Zealand election. So yeah, hope you enjoyed that. And if we have time for questions, we'll be, we can do that now or we'll be around for the rest of the day. Thank you.